Mm. Um. Oh. Hey there. Didn't see ya. Do you ever just take a moment to look at old family photos and think, damn, my mom was cool. Well, today's episode of Horror Hostry is a very special one because it deals with someone very near and dear to my heart. Oregon's first horror host, Tarantula Ghoul. See right there's mom, and there's me. Yeah, just ignore the hairy hands, you don't see that. And uh, there's little baby count. Aw, we're such a happy little family. Horror host three with Barnaby Bad. I'm tired of living, want to die, but here's a real good reason why. If Myla Nermy is considered the mother of all horror hosts, then that makes her my grand Pyra. And as many fellow Horagonians consider her, by extension, that makes Tarantula Ghoul my mom. Although I stated in the previous episode that the series will focus more on the personas of each host and hostess, due to there being so little information on Tarantula Ghoul, I will be including as much information as we know about her life outside of the show as well. Suzanne Waldron was born in Portland, Oregon in July of 1931. She graduated from Washington High School in 1950, then went on to study at New Mexico Highlands University, as well as the Lewis and Clark College, where she developed an interest in theater. By 1952, Suzanne had begun performing in stage productions at the Portland Civic Auditorium. Though she told magazine TV Radio Mirror in an interview, directors invariably thought she was too tall, too skinny, and too shy for the big parts, she eventually started drawing attention through roles in J.B. Priestley's Dangerous Corner and as the lead in Maxwell Anderson's Elizabeth the Queen. Now over in Hollywood, the Vampire Show had just finished its 50-episode run, and though it was only broadcast in L.A., word had spread of its popularity and TV stations everywhere started clamoring to come up with their own vampires. Back here in Oregon, Suzanne's performance as a witch in a production of Macbeth had caught the eyes of local television producers for KPTV. She was quickly hired and given a spooky makeover. With shoulder-length black hair, jagged pointed bangs, a matching black dress, and a new name, Suzanne's horror MC persona was born. House of Horror premiered on KPTV Channel 12 on Wednesday, October 9th, 1957 at 10.30 p.m. Tarantula Ghoul, or Tarant as her fans would soon call her, presented the 1951 sci-fi horror flick, The Thing from Another World. House of Horror's formula was in many ways similar to that of its L.A. parent Vampira. Each episode, Tarantula, along with her grave robber turned gardener Milton, played by John Hillsbury, a real-life boa constrictor named Baby, Heathcliff the Rattlesnake, and a puppet spider named Sir Galahad would host the show and do comedy bits between the scenes of a film from a weirdly decorated room. The room was decorated with such oddities as a cyclops head on a mantle and a painting of whatever the hell this guy is. Some episodes were hosted from a patio overlooking a cemetery that Tarantula called the neighborhood, while others were featuring completely unique set pieces inspired by the film of the night. Some such as Frankenstein's Lab, A Mummy's Tomb, and while others were hosted entirely in French with subtitles or even had an audience of monsters worshipping King Kong's supposed great-great-grandson, Kenya. Tarantch was noted to enjoy causing mischief including, but not limited to, removing road hazard signs and going after the city zoo for not housing prehistoric animals. She was a member of the Daughters of the Salem Witch Trials organization and practiced second aid for the Black Cross. After the first episode aired, several fans wrote to Tarantch in distress over a sight gag featuring the grave of Lassie the dog. You wouldn't think kids would be up that late, she replied, but she had soon begun making a lasting impression in fans of all ages. Allowing her fans to be a live studio audience proved to help boost the popularity of the show and help develop a strong relationship with a loyal fan base. One group of college students from Willamette University in Salem became reoccurring audience guests, leading to them starting an actual Black Cross group to honor her. After being guests on the show several times, Tarantula repaid their devotions and was the guest of honor at a fraternity dinner. Throughout the next year, Suzanne would continue the shtick and fully embrace the Tarantula character. From press conferences and cemeteries, appearing as honored guests at school dances and carnivals, signing death certificates as autographs, doing news columns, and getting carried out in a casket at a football game, this woman did it all, and she did it lovingly. She even recorded two novelty songs which, to set the record straight, were released as one 7-inch in 1958. Fun fact. While Tarantch performed vocals, some sources claim that backing vocals in the band credited as the Grave Diggers were actually done by an uncredited Bobby Boris Pickett's Crypt Kickers band. You may recognize them as the guys who did the original Monster Mash. When out of character, Suzanne enjoyed listening to music and quietly reading at home with her great Dane Frankenstein. She also spent plenty of time around Portland's underground gay bars making friends with the LGBT community. She was noted to be a soft-spoken and sweet and funny woman that was very friendly but could be opinionated on some things. 
She could talk for hours and would always encourage fans to follow their dreams. House of Horror continued to run for one season, but despite its growing fan base and high ratings, on November 26, 1958, an announcement was made through the Oregonian. Sad news for horror fans, Tarantula Ghoul presents her last show over on KPTV tonight. Suzanne Waldron will leave for rehearsals of a New York show January 1st. You may be able to catch a glimpse of her on KPTV's Christmas Eve program. But contrary to what the article stated, that night's episode was the last appearance of Tarantula Ghoul, period. Suzanne wasn't leaving for New York. She was fired. According to her son, TV execs found out that she had become an affair and gotten pregnant by her fellow employee and KPTV sales manager, John Petty, who at the time was married. Fearing bad publicity, the good old folks at KPTV fired Suzanne and laid House of Horror to rest in the television graveyard. Though this may have been the end of Taranta's story, it certainly was not the end of Suzanne's. In early 1959, Sue left Portland and stayed in Seattle, Washington when she began showing. Then she had the baby in DC. The following year, John divorced his wife, married Suzanne, and they had a second child shortly after. Sometime in the 60s, Suzanne and family returned to Portland and under a new name, Suzanne Petty, she began acting on stage again at the Portland Civic Center, as well as doing commercials and some voiceover work. This lasted for a brief time, then after moving around a bit, the family settled in Omaha, Nebraska. We now detour from Sioux in Nebraska for just a brief moment back to a hip and groovy Portland in the early 70s. Here in the office of Oregon Journal columnist Doug Baker, a man came storming in wearing a cape and holding a jug of stage blood. Jeepers! Who could have thought Shaggy was running a drug cartel out of the back of the mystery machine? Oh, I guess swear it wasn't me, man. I've been framed! And to think we wouldn't have known any better if Thelma hadn't caught him talking to the dog. No, no, no. Like, you got it all wrong, Fred. I was trying to get Scooby to shut the whole thing down. He's the mastermind behind all of this. It's okay, Shaggy. We're sending you to rehab so you can get the help that you need. Rehab? Rehab? Yeesh. He said rehab. What will they come up with next? What's up? Who the hell are you? Hey, man. You remember two inches of green? The gal that used to do horror shows on Channel 12? Yeah, well, I'm, uh, I'm a brother Scooby, and I've got the next big thing for you. Now, I know what you're thinking. Who the hell is this Scorpio guy? You didn't mention Taranch having a brother before. Well, it turns out that Scorpio was none other than John Hillsbury. And if that name rings a bell, it's because John was Suzanne's co-host on House of Horror and Taranch's gardener, Milton. Eh, is she gonna be in it? No. She decided to join the living. It seems old John was trying to propose a new show called Terror on 12th. But after doing my typical deep dive, it seems that nothing really came of it. <laughs> Well, what do you think? Yeah, sorry, John. No one wants to watch a guy in a cape tell bad jokes anymore. Mr. Baker, we have a Mr. Ives out here waiting for you. Santa Man. Sorry, John. I guess I always have my backup plans. See you later. Bill. Okay, then. While John's concept never made it past Doug's garbage pail, in 1972, another local actor made an attempt at a new show, and it did get picked up. That November, K2TV gave a Sinister Cinema, hosted by a longtime radio personality named Victor Ives and his sidekick, Ravenscroft, played by Jimmy Hollister. Funny enough, Ravenscroft shared a very striking resemblance to John Hillsbury's character, Milton. According to IMDb, John was on the November 25th, 1972 episode of Sinister Cinema as himself. I can't find any other resources on that. It's definitely something I will continue to research, but if anyone knows more, please comment below. I'm very curious. I will be doing a full episode on Victor in the future, but I felt this was worth mentioning as it does have some minor ties to Tarant and Suzanne. 
Though they never met in person, on the night that Sinister Cinema aired, Victor received a Western Union telegram from the Gould herself in character, congratulating him on a new show. I also recall reading a while back that there had been a proposed Sinister special where Suzanne would have been a guest, but I can't seem to find the source now, and sadly, that would never happen. See, back in Omaha, Suzanne lived out the rest of her life happily as a wife and mother of two. Then, in June of 1982, Suzanne Petty passed away after a fight with colon cancer right before her 51st birthday. Over time, Tarantula Ghoul and House of Horror faded into obscurity, with no reruns and the only remains of the existence of her show being old magazine clippings and her novelty songs being used on Halloween compilation albums. According to staff at KPTV and Fox, it's claimed that there were no archives of the show, and a few years back the head of Fox told Oregon Live that no one bothered to do a good enough job preserving footage. Now. While I do believe that that is what the staff today may believe, or that it's the most accurate statement that they can make because they weren't there when it happened, I personally feel like there's something more contributing to it than that. Let's take a short look back at how things ended. It's the 50s. You have a widely popular show, a young actress that's drawing in views and has a large fan base, she gets pregnant out of wedlock after having an affair with another staff member, the show gets cancelled, and she leaves from Portland to Seattle. Sounds more to me like the basis of a witch burning in a predominantly white male-led America. I wouldn't be surprised if pissed off higher-ups trade to blacklister, ran around the town, and ordered all the footage was destroyed. Then there's always the reasoning that shows back then were commonly shot live and weren't recorded, but that doesn't explain why we don't have at least little snippets and opening sequences. Hell, the vampire show was shot live two years earlier and the kind scopes were found for that, albeit only for a minute or two, but still, I smell something dirty there. <laughs> Though we have no footage, Tarantula Ghoul has made a resurgence in popularity. After fading into obscurity for over 30 years, in the late 2000s, something happened. As terrible as a place as the internet can be, it can also do wonderful things sometimes. And thanks to several folks finding interest in old horror hosts, a whole new fan base was born. All over, fans began to collect up all those old magazine interviews and newspaper clippings. They uploaded them to forums and social media. People that grew up during House of Horrors Prime helped piece together its story by sharing memories of watching it and their personal meetings with Taranch. Since then, House of Horrors developed somewhat of a cult-like status, and Taranch's legacy lives on. All over the world, she's inspired everything from fan scenes and fan art, to custom dolls, burlesque shows, and in 2018, Tarantula Ghoul was even inducted into the Horror Host Hall of Fame by longtime internet host, The Mummy and the Monkey. I'd also like to mention that recently us fang folks over here at Castle Von Ghoul started an Instagram fan page dedicated to continuing to search for and preserve all things related to Suzanne and her spooky persona. While it's no guarantee we'll find more, we have unearthed several photos that could have been lost to time. I know it comes off as self-promotion, but that's not the intent. If you'd like to support us on our endless search, or if you have something to contribute yourself, I'll leave a link in the description. Preserving media is something we strongly believe in over here, and in a world where so many shows like House of Horror have little to no footage left and are becoming more and more obscure, I feel like it's really important for the horror community. With modern technology and social media combined with passionate fan bases dedicated to finding and preserving lost media, I truly believe that now is the time to make sure these shows, or what's left of them, is preserved for future fans. So do me a huge favor, go online, search your local area and see if you have or had a horror host, then go start a fan page today. Let's keep our spooky MC friends alive, or not alive, and remembered for years to come. I'm Barnaby Bat, and until next time, stay spooky. Graveyard Rock. It's a graveyard. Graveyard Rock. Everybody digs a graveyard rock. The party's over, boy. So close those coffin lids. Hey there, friends. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to stay updated on all the weird spooky shit happening here at Castle Fall Cool. You can also follow us on our unsocial media over on Instagram at CalFallGool and at Farm Be Back is Dead. Stay spooky.